Have you ever wondered what can push a perfectly normal person into the depths of psychosis? Well, by the end of this video, hopefully you'll have a much better understanding. I'm going to tell you what I think caused my psychosis. But just before I go into this, I want to say everything that I say in this video is based on my own experiences. And if I do offer any advice, although it may have worked for me, it may or may not work for you. I'm going to share the lifestyle factors and the drugs I took, which I think contributed to my mental health breakdown. Before I make a start, I just want to say that these videos take time and energy to create and a whopping 97% of you who watch my videos don't subscribe. So if you do enjoy them, please hit subscribe and it will encourage me to put the energy into making more like this. Cheers. Back to the video. Let's talk about isolation. This may surprise some of you out there, especially those of you that know me personally, but at the time or my build up to psychosis, I felt very lonely and isolated. I was single at the time, maybe saw my friends once or twice a week to go out. My day to day life would look like a nine to five job and I'd come home and pretty much every evening just sit on my own in my room and go on my phone until bed. While this is probably very common, I can understand now that any sort of build up of stress and tension, if you haven't got anyone to talk to and vent about it and someone that can understand your thoughts and feelings, all of these feelings are just going to be pent up and seem to compound over time and get worse and worse, pushing you to the breaking point. So now when I feel this build up, I'll make sure I talk to someone. It's often my fiance, but for those of you that haven't got a partner out there, if it's friends, family, a medical professional, a therapist, anyone like that, please do because it will help massively. The next one may surprise you because it's legal and I bet you use it every day. And this one is caffeine. But why? Because it impacts your sleep. And I genuinely think the build up of my psychosis and the lack of sleep caffeine did definitely contribute towards that. It obviously wasn't the sole factor, because I'm explaining all the other things in this video which probably contributed. But since I learned the fact that caffeine has a 12 hour half-life, made me understand that even if I was to have a coffee at midday, that's gonna affect my sleep and deep sleep. And since cutting out caffeine now, I really notice if one day I go where I even have a coffee at 10 in the morning, I do notice it's harder for me to switch off in the evenings. So although it's a minor one, I'd definitely say be cautious. So I know some of you, our parents included, can literally drink coffee or tea before bed and have no problem sleeping whatsoever. So if that's you, go ahead and do it. But for anyone else out there, just be conscious that yes, there is a 12 hour half-life, so it can stay in your system for longer than what you'd expect. The next one is stress and build up from work. So to be honest with you, I was answering emails on my phone when I had a backlog of work, late in the evenings trying to catch up and that meant that my mind was elsewhere and not focusing on just relaxing. So I'd go two to three nights without any sleep at all and then I really noticed a huge difference in my thoughts. And although I thought my thoughts were clear and concise and I was alert, these were obviously delusional to others and I did notice a difference. So that was a big one. Right, now let's cut to the biggest impact. Sensitive topic. Let's talk about drugs, man. Not the easiest thing to say to everyone on YouTube, but you name a drug, I've probably taken it. Cocaine, weed, ecstasy, mushrooms, Ket, not proud. Sorry, mum. When I gradually moved into psychosis, there wasn't any ket, cocaine, mushrooms, or ecstasy in my system, but there was alcohol and weed. And that does not mean those drugs do not cause psychosis. Now I look back, I genuinely think that all of those had a contributing factor. So even if something wasn't in my system, it could have affected my day to day mood, anxiety levels, stress levels, how my body was functioning, how I felt, which led me to using the weed and the alcohol, which eventually had a big shift into moving me into psychosis. 
Well, while we're here and we're on the topic of drugs, if you haven't been through psychosis before and you have taken mushrooms or cocaine and you want to understand what psychosis feels like, imagine taking the two together. That's quite an accurate reflection. Based on that and some research I've done in that magic mushrooms can change your neural pathways, it does make me wonder if, even though that was months before, did that have an impact later on? Don't know to be sure. So when I was in this delusional state and charged with energy, strangely from the lack of sleep, I went out and drunk a lot of alcohol and smoked a lot of weed. And this just kicked something inside of me, like a shot, like a spiritual release. And a lot of aggression was pent up and I ended up just going like, Rah! I remember screaming at the sky and feeling like God had sent me on this mission and that I was the chosen one. So the time between the weed and this was very minimal, which makes me think that was the most contributing factor. And based on research and what others have said, it's probably true. It does frustrate me and confuse me how places like Amsterdam decriminalise and sell weed in shops. I know that the weed is very different. It's more natural. It's not sprayed with chemicals like the skunk is on the streets. And it's probably lower in THC, but still, I think this can cause a lot of confusion for people out there. What's safe, what isn't? If you are interested to know what psychosis feels like, I made a video describing exactly what it's like based on my first person experience. If you're struggling at the moment, please reach out for help. You're not alone. Thanks for watching.